Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the Carter Hour. Um, I know I haven't posted up a video in a while. I've been quite busy. Um, just a lot of different things going on in life, as seems like all of us have. Um, I'm going to do a project uh, tonight, and uh, it's been a project that has needed to be done for quite some time. And I think a lot of you will end up um, in the same issue. Uh, this project is in relation to the 2008 Mercury Grammar Key, and I want to show you, it was just a beetle that flew over my head, I want to show you guys um, what I'm going to actually do here on the 2008 Mercury Grammar Key. Uh, it's been having an issue, and a lot of Panther platforms with the ATC have had this issue. So I'm going to go ahead pull in the mercury grand marquee into the garage and uh, let's get started so as you can see I have the uh, auto climate control unit within the uh, 2008 mercury grand marquee and what happens is is when I want to select normal AC AC comes on I say uh, put it down to there's no airflow coming out of the vents. What happens is, is that all airflow is redirected to the defrost up here, as you can hear. Um, as you can hear up here, it's in the defrost area. And um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pull this unit out and we're gonna rebuild it. Now, it only takes a couple dollars of parts to rebuild this. I've checked eBay, I've checked uh, Ford Motor Company dealers. Uh, to replace this unit, it costs over $700. Uh, to get a rebuild service, to send it in and, and get a rebuild done on it, it's about $100. So I'm thinking, well, I'm mechanically inclined. I can take on this project and rebuild this myself. Most people can. I mean. It's a, it's a very simple unit. That's what I like about Ford Ford cars. They're very simple to work on. And since this car hasn't really changed for, you know, uh, from 1979 up until the end of the 2011, um, they actually made them, I believe, for fleet in Saudi Arabia uh, up until 2011. I know the Crown Vic was made until then, too. But uh, so without further ado, we're going to go ahead you're gonna to have to pull off this trim piece. And since we've got a 2008 with the digital um, dash over here, we're gonna to have to pull this out slightly and I will do the whole tutorial here. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut off the car and we're gonna go ahead and get started on this. Now this piece just pulls right off. It's uh, held in with spring clips. So we're gonna start with, I think I'm gonna do it from the passenger side. We wanna start with this, so just a quick Gently pull and it'll come right off. Now, with the 2008 model, they also have this uh, airbag uh, light, which we'll have to disconnect, and then also the defrost. Now, in the earlier models, like uh, 2005 and below, you won't have these buttons here, which I'll try to get it in the shot here. Sorry, this is a little bit weird. I'll just leave it back in that position. I suck at camcordering, so sorry guys. Um, so we're gonna have to disconnect the button panel that's attached to this trim piece and also the defrost and the passenger airbag light. Now you should just be able to reach back here and grab a tab, but I'm gonna pull this piece off so I can kind of show you guys how to disconnect this while we're there. And it just comes off like that. Now some you might have to use a little bit of force, but right over here is the airbag light. There's just a tab on the top, you push down and you pull out. And then, um, and remember this one has that same thing on the right side. And the defrost is, I believe, Well, anyways, we'll have to do the defrost. 
This is the pan only we want to get access to. I believe these are eight millimeter. I believe they're eight millimeter. So I'll get my eight millimeter and we'll pull this panel out. And then we'll have to disconnect a couple of wire harnesses behind here and the vacuum uh, manifold. So, uh, okay, so what I'm using here, and I don't think it's actually the, the exact right size, is a 930 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to put these down here where I'll find them. So you actually have four of these screws that hold the Ford ATC unit in. It's very simple, I mean, to be able to remove this and to actually take apart as well. I've taken apart a couple of these, but I've never knew exactly how to fix them until I found a, kind of a, a guide on the internet but I've seen one other video on how to fix it but I haven't seen the full tutorial on how to take out the unit and get it you know disconnected and put back in and so here's the two wiring harnesses and this is the vacuum that it uses to uh, control the solenoids behind the dash so there should be a tab right here as you can you probably can see hopefully you can see anyways hopefully I got the camera pointed in the right direction now it might be a little tough to get out and uh, I'm gonna actually take the vacuum manifold off first and that's the right size. Yeah, perfect size. I believe it's the 10 millimeter. And these nuts just come off. Um, just put them somewhere that you'll find them. Now, when you're taking this apart, you might hear a hiss um, because it's vacuum controlled and you're releasing the vacuum from the inside solenoids um, the problem with these units is the solenoid control center has o-rings in there and they go bad after a while I don't know if you guys heard that but it released vacuum which is a good sign too because if it doesn't release vacuum it means there's probably something more in depth that is a big problem so almost got the unit out um, I should have a small screwdriver here too but... there we go so that's what the back of the unit looks like you got your vacuum manifold the middle one I believe is your your black line which is uh, the vacuum that comes from the uh, engine itself and these are actually your different solenoids that you have control on um, I believe also one right here, this is actually a sensor that senses, it actually pulls in, uses a vacuum, pulls air in from the car, and senses the temperature as it pulls that air in. That's how the uh, auto climate control works. And there's also um, up here on the dash, which I know you guys can't see, but if you look to the left hand when you're sitting in the driver's seat, there's where your, your theft light blinks if you have a non-police cruiser model which if you have the the p71 you're not going to have auto climate control unless you retrofit but cars that have the auto climate control standard as a uh, part of the package you're going to have a blinking light up there and what they have is a sun load sensor that also compensates and and then it makes the adjustments for the automatic temperature control so we're going to go ahead go in the house take this thing apart and um, get this thing fixed. Okay, for the screws that we need to remove are gonna be two Torx 15s. I'm just gonna 
just going to take these out. should release our solenoid, which is our solenoids on the back here. We're going to want to disconnect it from the circuit board right here. And that's it. And then we will take the other unit, place it to the side, and um, leave. We can just release this plastic. have to actually have to actually take these out Phillips screwdriver we need different uh, set of solenoids um, but it could be the same principle <clears throat> so <clears throat> You're going to find these wires taped to the bottom there, just a little bit of a pull, and you're good to go. Now I'm going to need, um, I'm going to need my uh, needle nose pliers, so I'm going to go grab those, and we'll get back to work on this, so stay tuned. Alright, we are back. So now you have the solenoid, and this is where the problems are caused because the vacuum basically there's a vacuum applied to this and these cylinders decide where that vacuum is going to be applied whether it's the vents the floor to frost or I think this might be a bi-level um, solenoid I'm not sure exactly all I know is how to take this thing apart and fix it so without further ado what we need to do is on each one of these cylinders now don't do just one do them all four of them because first of all you might find out which cylinder is leaking well it's a bad choice to decide to just do one we want to do all four of these even if their rings are good we want to replace them all because we don't want to really want to dig back into this thing and do it again now what I'm going to be using is number 007 o-rings and I picked these up at O'Reilly Auto Parts now, McMaster Car has probably better ones, but uh, at this point in time, I didn't want to wait. And if it even gives me by three years, uh, I'm going to call it a, a success. Um, also, I picked up a package of, or a packet of dielectric connector grease. Um, you're going to want to use this in applying to put the new rings on and also coat the rings when you reinsert them back into the cylinders themselves. So I'm going to put these aside for now, and uh, I'm going to go ahead, and what you're going to want to do is these tabs right here. You're going to want to bend this one and this one. Careful not to damage this foam piece. Um, I don't know if it has actual purpose or if it's just, uh, just there to protect, but um, you want to bend these tabs out as straight as possible because you're going to have to... Um, Put these tabs back in place once you slide the cylinder back in. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of just working it in. Oops, just got myself in a face there. Um, and sometimes you need an aid of a screwdriver, small flat baited screwdriver. Should do the trick. Get that pulled out a little bit more. And then I work my magic in there. And now we have our tabs. And this should come, this should come right out. If it doesn't, use your flat bladed screwdriver and just kind of gently pull on it. You might have to work around. it comes out and there it is now a spring might come out with it like that we're gonna to want to head deposit that back into the cylinder itself now here's the problem these o-rings right here go bad after a while and uh, we're gonna replace them with 
these ones and hopefully it gives us a better seal and we will see this is my first time doing one of these projects so I figured I'd share it with my YouTube subscribers now see that one just immediately failed it is dry rotted to the core so that's the o-ring right there I don't know if it's focusing on it but it just it, it I couldn't even slip it off there without breaking it so we don't really care we're gonna put a new o-ring on there so that is uh that is the cylinder right there and um, I'm gonna go ahead and open my dielectric grease to the point where um, I think it comes out this way Okay, so just going to want to push that up, get a little bit of dielectric on it. This will enable it to slip on a little easier because we, we definitely don't want to break our, our new o rings. And um, so I'm going to go ahead. I've already applied some dielectric grease which is a full 100% silicone grease. Apply one of our new O-rings. And um, these are pretty hard to get on. So we're gonna wanna be very careful not to break our new O-rings. And uh, the stretch is gonna be tight. I already know this. We might need the aid of our screwdriver here, but careful not to break the O-ring. Definitely don't want that to happen. And uh, so I got the new O-ring on there, like that. And uh, I'm going to apply some more silicone. Do this o ring. And I'm going to go ahead and slide this puppy back in. You hear it click, and that one's done. So that's all it really takes to um, <clears throat> get, this, uh, get this project done. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to do the other four. And I'm going to and then you just want to apply just enough pressure to get that back in place and there it is rebuilt like new I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let you guys uh, get a break in I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the three and then um, I'm gonna put this thing back together so I'll bring you back when I put it back together and um, then we'll uh, put it all back together put it back in the car give it a test and hopefully uh, it's successful so I'll see you back here in just a few moments. All right, everybody, welcome back. Um, well, I had a little incident here, and since this is my first time, you or first time rebuilding one of these units, um, I happened to have the last cylinder that I was working on, and I dumped it out. I lost a spring, and this piece came out. And what this is is. Basically, either it's part of the solenoid, so when the solenoid is activated, that's pulled back and it allows the vacuum into the cylinder to go into the, you know, appropriate solenoid, vacuum solenoid. 
and not only did I that drop out of there I lost a spring too and uh, so what happened was is luckily I had a spare ATC unit that I had bought uh, for my 2003 Grand Marquis which was actually the incorrect unit anyways and it was out of this unit now this is an early 90s or late 90s um, ATC unit this is still the same faceplate as this one however this was for a Lincoln Continental and it would not have worked in the Panther platform so what I did is I tore out the two uh, cylinders to see what order uh, these have gone in and I'll tell you exactly what order so if you run into this situation uh, you can just refer back to this video and uh, it'll show you exactly what you need to do so going in to the cylinder this black piece right here needs to be facing the inside well this pitted portion now I don't know if you guys can see that the pitted portion there needs to go towards the outside towards the um, towards the vacuum piece that we pull out and put the new o-rings on so essentially it goes like this you slide it in you have your spring okay and then this piece goes in like that so you have this this little pitted area here goes up against and it assembles like that so now that I have the unit which now I have extra springs which is a good thing and an extra solenoid piece that uh, I can use at a uh, later date um, I'm ready to reassemble this back into the ATC unit. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, well, before we do that, we got to uh, apply the plastic unit. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this back the way it's supposed to be. And this looks like it's, looks like cor it's correct right there. So we'll go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and assemble that uh, and find my, oh, right here. Okay. So yeah, it doesn't pay to lose the parts. So if you're doing this, it's probably best to do it on a towel because then things won't bounce out as easy off a hard table like this is. Um, this is kitchen table repairs. Usually I'd be doing this in my shop, but I just felt like doing it on the kitchen table tonight. And it is late night. It's like 1 o'clock in the morning. But I wanted to make sure I got this, this job done because it's a pain in the butt to get in that car and have your air conditioning come out of defrost and having a hot day and you're not cooling down quick enough. And so if, you, if you're doing this with an early 90s, um, or not early 90s, I'm sorry, mid 90s and above, you're probably going to run into this metal piece right here. Um, and you can't go to the junkyard and find a piece like this unless you want to splice everything back together. And the only reason these have two different connectors is <clears throat> they're using a common ground on this solenoid versus this one, where, as you can see, all the grounds are going into one plug and all the... Uh, regular positives are going into this plug so that makes it um, eight terminals instead of five like this one has where it has the four and then the common ground that just goes to every solenoid um, these ones I don't know how you would rebuild these ones there goes the second thing um, I don't know how you'd rebuild a solenoid on one of these models um, because it's all metal I don't know how you would get this apart there's probably people out there that have I just don't have the expertise. I just wanted the pieces out of it, so I uh, wasn't going to tear it apart um, precisely and carefully because it's no good to me anyways. But luckily I had the extra pieces. Um, but a word of caution on this particular unit is 
this is only held on by this plastic piece and it tends to want to twerk on you um, just be careful I would suggest be careful try to not twerk on these pieces because they're only being held on um, lately by this metal here so I don't know what the ramifications are I hope that they're you know I hope that doesn't affect it but I know I twerked on this one a little bit not intentionally but um, you know it just happened because I, was, I had to apply some pressure to put everything back and if I could have kept it on this plastic piece if these wouldn't have been in the way and this wouldn't have been here right here um, I would have just done the, the I would have actually redone it probably in this plastic piece but or the plastic top piece of the ATC but it just didn't happen that way so I'm just gonna hope for the best I think it's gonna work I had I feel positive about it and uh, you know it doesn't take much I mean I, I put in what was it two ninety nine two dollars ninety nine cents for the parts in here when you go online to get a rebuild service of a hundred and between ninety and a hundred and thirty five dollars uh, it costs to rebuild one of these and at the dealer they want like six hundred and eighty eight dollars so two dollars ninety nine cents not so bad let's just hope it works so I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this piece back in and make sure uh, when you're reassembling back in you plug this back this lead back into the circuit board down here and we are plugged in I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in and there's two tabs up at the top here you don't want to take careful note when you slide this back in you're gonna slide those tabs in and then it should just fall back in place I'm gonna take our uh, Torx bit screws reapply I'm gonna go ahead and put both these in here and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch my Torx bit a crappy screwdriver but hey it works all right go ahead and reassemble unit near the reassembly portion I want to show you guys um, what I found in my O-rings in this uh, ATC. So I had three good ones and as I showed you earlier this one was just dry rotted and that's what was causing the air conditioning and every other level of mode on the ATC to malfunction and go right to the defrost because this was getting ready to tear. I mean I just put tiny bit of pressure on it and it just came off. These other ones are still viable. They're still pliable. One, one of those words. Um, they're still pliable but um, again I replaced them all because I just wanted to do it that way um, to make sure that the unit was going to function without issues. Um, also I ended up with these extra parts and I'm sure I'll end up with an extra spring when I find it in the carpet. Um, remember that this assembly, if this piece happens to fall out on you, um, that the solid portion goes inward into the solenoid while the divoted part goes towards the outside. So again, you have your spring this piece in here, your spring, and that, and that's how it reassembles. So, just wanted to show you guys that, kind of give you a review of what we did here today. And when you're actually going to reassemble this unit, these tabs right here, um, you can just take and be careful when you do this. Apply just enough pressure. I just use the end, the tip of my uh, needle nose or. Swiss Army or whatever you call it to push it in and I just gave it enough pressure to, to get it back down to the original configuration so without further ado let's go back to the Mercury Grand Marquis 
and uh, reassemble this into the vehicle itself. But before I, I reassemble everything, I'm going to put the vacuum manifold back on and the two harnesses, and we're going to uh, give her a test. So let's go do that. Okay, we're back in the car here in the Mercury, uh, the 2008 Mercury Grand Marquis. I'm going to go ahead and plug everything back in. You should always plug in your electrical harnesses first. Gray goes that side, black goes on this side, and I don't think you can mess those up, but I'm not sure. Um, go ahead and reapply the vacuum manifold, and then we'll use our retaining nuts to put back on here, just like so. And make sure they come off this way with the back towards the ATC unit. Make sure you place them back on that way because if you don't, you could have leaks. We definitely don't want vacuum leaks because that causes issues. All right, I'm just my trusty 10 millimeter. Yep, 10 millimeter. Just need a socket. You don't need to put them on tight. Just tight enough. Snug. Just snug them up. I don't need to be on that tight. Don't need to ratchet them on there, torque them down to, you know, 90 pounds of pressure. <laughs> and okay. So now the unit is assembled. Let's go ahead and place it back in here. We're not going to put the bolts in yet, but so hopefully it uh, works. So let's give her a start. Say C. And we're gonna the fan speed should increase. And voila, we've got AC coming through the vents. No problem at all. Nice coming through the vents now. And we'll run it through. Um, we'll run it through the different positions. strong the floor to frost works good defrost as we know worked before because <laughs> every position was defrost and then uh, we'll go back to let's go back to maximum AC and now we have coming out the vents and I'm gonna go ahead and cycle it again even though that's really bad, these three buttons are going to be the same. The floor. It does come out of the defrost a little bit when you go to the floor. But not a lot. Because it does come out of these vents uh, in the dashboard. You have two vents, one on the passenger side, one on the driver's side to defrost the passenger side of the window. And I, yes, I know the dashboard is very dirty. This car doesn't get driven very much, and it pretty much. Uh, you know, when you test, um, just to let you guys know, when you test the CTC and you uh, unplug the airbag light over here, you're going to get an airbag air light uh, or airbag uh, not working light over here, malfunction uh, on your cluster. So don't be alarmed. Uh, this is just not completing the, uh, the circuit that it needs to complete. So now we're working on the floor. Let's go to floor to frost. We're getting floor and the frost. Now let's go to defrost. And I'm gonna cycle it again. I just wanna make sure this is working correctly. Frost. 
and this clock isn't right. It's about 1.30 Eastern Standard Time. And another test that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take it out and drive it because even though it's working here now, I want to increase the vacuum pressure um, on the solenoids to make sure that they hold even when I'm accelerating. So I'm going to take this car out for a drive in just a little bit. Um, go ahead and reassemble this. and um, Go ahead and reassemble this and uh, hopefully everything after the drive everything works great but uh, I'm pretty satisfied uh, with this uh, project and uh, it's a very simple project you can save yourself a lot of money I know um, not so much the 90s you know uh, mid to late 90s that these went bad uh, these seem to be pretty reliable units but after 2000s and up Seemed like they uh, got cheap on the O-rings and the solenoid, which you saw it was a block of metal before, but now it's just a piece of plastic, which if it was a still a piece of metal, you wouldn't be able to rebuild them, or at least you'd have to figure out a different way and how to disassemble that. But, you know, with these, you know, failing, I uh, all I was reading was failures on these, failure after failure after failure, and it was because of the O-rings. And um, get yourself a good set of O-rings. Um, I would recommend getting the McMaster car O-rings. But since I wanted to get this done, I think your O'Reilly's will be okay. Um, the National O-rings, I believe. They didn't have the Felpros like I wanted to get. But, you know, you can't, you can't win them all. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this back together. And uh, this is, it's a metric but I'm using a 9.30 seconds, uh, I believe it's 9.30 seconds, or is it 5.30 seconds? It's 9.30 seconds to reassemble this. Um, helps to have the proper tools. My tools are not organized right now, so I can't really find anything. Um, we'll just reassemble this back in here. And you don't have to torque the crap out of this, just nice and snug. Oops, that's what I worry about, ladies and gents, is uh, losing one of these guys in here, especially with uh, black interior and these being black screws. Good luck finding that one. So make sure you reconnect your connections because you'll have an airbag malfunction light on and uh, you won't be able to switch on your switch your driver information center unless uh, you have those all plugged back in. <laughs> you know, make sure if you take your defrost out too, that you plug that back in. And uh, I'm going to have to actually open the door here because that's the protocol. You want to make sure your passenger side door is open so we can get this back in place in the correct manner. So. Now, if something doesn't feel like it's going in, it's best to check it. Without, you know, forcing this thing in and have it go all. There we go. So far, so good on the air conditioning. Um, 
seems to be holding its vacuum as I accelerate and um, that's what we want to see. We don't want to go into the defrost. Air conditioning is nice and cold. Um, so I'm really, I'm really impressed. I'm really happy about how the project worked out. And if you have that same issue with your uh, automatic climate control, then um, you know you can go ahead and uh, fix it yourself and uh, fix it with two dollars and ninety nine cents worth of parts. You know that's of course not tax not included, but I think it's around you know depending on what state you live in. So I'm just going to take it up an incline hill here real quick because even when you did any acceleration, it uh, go to the defrost so. But uh, yeah, the auto climate control unit seems like, you know, from 2000 on up when they had the, the actual green display uh, as opposed to the blue display, seemed to fail a lot more. I don't know if they just got cheap on the parts, but the O-rings are a lot. The O-rings are definitely not good. At least I found one bad one that was completely dry rotted. So hopefully that silicone in there with the O-rings will provide years of trouble-free uh, working condition for this Ford uh, automatic climate control system. So, I figured I would do a Mercury Grand Marquis driving video. I think I've done one before. And I figured we'd do it all in one shot here as one video. So, I got the camera stand in here. It's not buckled down, so kind of uh, doesn't uh, hold up by itself. But anyways, um, I'd like to thank each and every one of you uh, for watching my video, subscribing. Um, I just want to let you guys know that everybody out on YouTube that puts out videos um, takes a lot of time out of their day to go through and do the editing to uh, anything that they need to do and it, it takes time and it also takes time computing wise power electricity costs involved so you know if you're watching a video out there even if you don't like it my suggestion is you, you give the person respect because they took the time to edit the video and let you watch it so we all got to be a little nicer out on the YouTubes. I know that I've had some uh, some people come by and leave me bad comments. Um, that's their prerogative. I'm not going to let it ruin my day because I look at it. I look at things in a positive way. And I just wanted to let you guys know, as we were taking a drive here, that it takes time. And other subscribers, other people that put videos out on YouTube that subscribe to my channel, understand that. So if you're just on YouTube and you're watching videos and you really don't have a channel and you make some absurd comments, um, just remember, people uh, take time out of their day to do these videos for you. So I'm going to say my piece on that and uh, So anyways, that concludes the rebuilding of the Ford ATC. Um, very simple, a couple dollars worth of parts, and you'll be on the road again. I know how annoying that air conditioning coming out of the defrost. It's been about three years since this car started doing that, and I just never really addressed it. Um, this car had a warranty um, at one time. And I never got it in to uh, have that 
um, ATC replaced, but I'm glad that I actually rebuilt it because I put better O-rings in there than you're going to get from the factory. So even if they would have put a new unit in here under warranty, we still would have had the same problem three or four years down the road. Um, well, actually, this car is a 2008, so this started malfunctioning, I believe, in 2011. And um, so the car was only, what, three years? They are like four years old. So, so the car was only about four years old when this thing started malfunctioning. So I'd rather have um, the car functioning um, on better parts than just going back and having the warranty. Takes you about an hour, uh, hour and a half, depending on your uh, mechanical uh, abilities. It's pretty easy. Um, this project is recommended for anybody that has a mechanical incline to, you know, uh, take, you know, apart anything in a car. So just be careful on the solenoids when you do those. Don't put too much pressure on them. Anyways, that's it for another edition of the Carter Hour. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for viewing the videos and look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.